and back behind those horses, I am unstoppable. Osmosis at the clock tower, led by a length to Shinzo Arkansas Kid, and I am unstoppable is running on the leader, Osmosis, with 50 metres to go. Osmosis is clear and will take it out. Here we go, the Everest. Here we are, 1,200 metre race. Um, Group one now as well. Is it for this year? I think so. I'm pretty sure it was immediate change, but there was a bit of controversy around if they were going to recognise it immediately or not, but I'm pretty sure it's a Group 1 from Saturday. Um, I'll go through your key stats and facts. Favourites have won three times, punters all, but Giggy Kick, who paid $21, they've all paid single figures. So six out of the seven runners, winners have paid single figures. All have been male horses. In fact, a female horse has never placed. I think this is the year where that changes, but take with that what you will. Um, three-year-olds have won the race twice. I'm pretty sure, going back through the results, Giga Kick and Yes, 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 the two winners, they're the only three-year-olds who have placed. So they say three-year-olds have a good record in this race and because of the weight, but take that into account, punters. They're either winning or not placing. Um, and then only one horse has won from a double-digit barrier. Five of the seven winners have won from either barrier six or under. If you take a look at the speed map, Stormboy and Growing Empire are your two likely leaders with Lady of Camelot right behind them. I Am Me should also park right behind them. And then again, you've got your Giga Kicks, Bella Nipotina, Sunshine and Paris and Jolly Star. They're all going to be around that midfield pack. And then you've got your I Wish I Wins, Private Eyes, Traffic Wardens and Steffi Magneticas running up your rear. So you've got your four leaders, your four midfielders and your four back markers here. Boy, oh boy. This is the best Everest field we've had in It a is long. fantastic. I will say this before we get into pretenders and contenders. Take everything I say with a grain of salt when I call someone a pretender because I've had to be absolutely brutal. We have Otherwise, to, it have was to be 12 brutal. contenders because anything could win this. Honestly, if I could, I'd give everyone a contender, but we have to we have to pick someone. So I know there's going to be some people upset with it, but look, you can only do what you can do. So I cannot wait until that race is about to jump. Sweet Caroline is going to be playing. We're going to be screaming. We're going to be beers deep. We're going to be punting. And it is the best 90 seconds in Sydney racing. Um, yeah, I cannot wait. Let's get stuck in. Number one, I wish I win. Barrier nine, $6.50 to win, $2.30 to place. Nick, pretender or contender? I'm going pretender. I have to give Ooh. some a pretender. And I think I wish I win is just not the horse that it was. Look, I'll be wrong if I'm wrong. I'm going to probably be wrong because at the end of the day, any, like I said, any of these horses are going to win, so you can clip me all you want, but look, someone's going to make a decision. We've got to make those hard calls. I wish I win. Going pretend, I just think there's better options out there for me. Um, yeah, that, that third place uh, last up behind Growing Empire and Southport Tycoon just really didn't impress me. That was its chance to come back and really prove it. Um, yeah, it's going to be a pretender for me. I know that'll be harsh on a lot of critics, Um minds and and definitely can win but i've got to pick some so i'll go with that holy shit bro i'm pretender as well wow i'm saying this purely because like i said super brutal i've had to try and find any negatives with any of these horses and i think i'm getting a massive massive place vibe he placed narrowly last year and i'm getting the same vibe this year i remember a couple of years ago nick you said incentivize the boom melbourne cup favorite you just had that vibe he's going to come second I'm getting that same vibe with I Wish I Win here. Is he travelling as good as he was last year? Arguably he's not, but we've seen him at Mooney Valley with both starts and we know that Mooney Valley doesn't suit his racing style, so he'll be much better coming here in this big track. He'll drift to the rear of the field. He'll try and sweep them late, which he's quite capable of, but I think he's just going to miss it. I think he's going to come agonisingly close again. So I think at $2.30 to place, he's a great bet but I think he's just going to miss the win. So hence, I've had to go pretender here. As we move to horse number two, Giga Kick. Mark Zara will ride for the first time. He's out of barrier three, $14 to win, $4.20 to place. Uh, not the same horse since it's got injured. Um, yeah, pretender. I, I've got to pick some. Um, I just think there's better chances. It's going to be an awesome race. I'd love to see multiple horses being there at the end. And I think he'll be in the midfield, but... I just think there's better chances for me, Pretender. This is the only horse I'm actually somewhat confident in labelling a Pretender. Not super confident, somewhat confident, as he just isn't the same horse. Yes, obviously he's been building his fitness off that year-long break off the injury here, and he'll be peaking here, but there'll still be horses that are fitter than him who have residual fitness from their runs earlier in the year and their residual fitness from their runs in winter. 
Um, I think the fact that J-Mac's not on him tells you the story. If he was the best chance in the race, J-Mac would be on him. Um, I think he will go down as one of the bigger what-ifs in racing after that amazing three-year-old season, honestly. When he came in as a four-year-old, he had the world at his feet and unfortunately that injury has cost him what could have been a super, super lucrative career. It's already been lucrative with the fact that he had that one Everest win, but who knows? It could have been multiple Everests, could have been a Golden Eagle. world was at his feet. Uh, I think he can only run a place and hence I have to go pretender. Fair enough. Uh, Private Eye. Yeah, the three horse. $29 to win, $6.50 to place. What are your thoughts, mate? Uh, pretender. Can't win. Done its best. Um, yeah, it, it, it won't win. I'm saying contender. I think he's overs. Should not be $30 in a wide open no way, Everest. Man. $31 is a fair price. Look at the horses in this race. No way. Those, Have you seen the way he was are... closing off in both his starts this prep? Get him to 1,200 metres and watch no. him soar. I know he hasn't won in a while, but he's been performing in this class no every single way. race. That's crazy. He's usually only a couple of lengths off him. He's placed in this race before. He knows how to get it done. I can't. You can't say he's incapable. You cannot say he's incapable. Uh, I can't believe you... Th- see, I can't believe... Honestly, if you're giving I Wish I Win a pretender and you're giving Private Eye a contender... <sighs> I think Private Eye has travelled better than I wish I win this prep so far. He's closed off better than I wish I win, in my opinion. Hot take, man. But I'm saying contender for Private Eye. Bella Nip. Yeah, the four horse Bella Nipatina. Um, 12th barrier, though, for Bella Nipatina. $10 to win, $3.25 to place. What are your thoughts? Uh, this is giving me a place vibe for me. I don't think she'll get it done. Um, I'll go contender. I don't think she'll get it done, but she can win. If she wins, won't be surprised. Any other barrier probably wins the race. Look, the barrier is a deterrent. Like I said, only one horse has won from uh, an outside barrier. But to be fair, it's a seven-year-old race. Those statistics, you know, it's a very small sample size. Um, But she does her best work from wide barriers. She won a group one earlier in the year from a very wide barrier. She also came, uh, it was barrier 15, by the way. She came second in last year's Sydney Stakes from a wide barrier. Um, And she ages like a fine wine. You can never count her out. As long as she doesn't get caught without uh, cover, which is a genuine possibility from the 12th barrier, I'd be shocked to see her out at the finish. If she can slot in and get some cover, she just pops out late and surely, surely just digs and digs and digs and gets into the finish and hopefully does enough to get her nose in front at the right time. We'll love that it's a bit soggy as well. If we get a soft five or six, soft six track on the day, she's going to love that more than a few of the other horses. So contender Bellina Patina, we move to... The stable mate here, number five, I am me. Nash Rulwiller is going to ride here. Again, opposites here. Barrier one, $19 to win, $5.50 to place. I think this is overs. Um, definite contender. Racing real well, two wins in a row. Um, distance is done and proved multiple times. Six from 10 in the last, um, at the distance, sorry, with four of them being wins. Contender, um, I'm pretty happy with this and will definitely be my exotics. Yeah, she's in this race up to her neck. I see no reason whatsoever she should be at the price she is. She, just like Bella, ages like a fine wine. She gets better and better every prep. She's come back even better this prep, and she's gotten two wins. She's even beaten Bella Nipatina. I know that was over 1,000 metres, and this is 1,200 metres. Can she run a strong 1,200 metres? Well, she can run 1,200 metres. Can she run an Everest 1,200 metres? We'll find out on the weekend. But she's proved this prep she can hang with the best, and... I, I think she'll be hoping the track does dry out because that's when she is at her best. But I think the fact that she is primed to park right on the leader's back, she'll have every chance in the world to use that to her advantage and just hopefully cross heels late and Nash can just throw the sink at her and try and get her over the line. Massive contender, in my opinion. We get to number six, Steffi Magnetica. Zach Lloyd's going to ride here instead of riding Traffic Warden. He's riding his Stradbroke horse, Bjorn Baker, trained barrier six, $15 to win $3.90 to place. Yeah, contender, I like this. Um, Steffi is looking good. Um, that win, uh, second place, sorry, first up was was pretty faultless um, behind IME, who I've also given contender. So I'll go contender here for Steffi. It's very often that you want a 1,300 metre horse in these sort of races, punters. Reason being, they go out fast. They go out hard. A typical 1,200 metre horse might start to tire in that last 100 metres because of just how much pressure there is. So you want those run-on types. You want those horses that are actually built for 1,300, 1,400 in case that does occur. And this horse fits the bill. It's a Stradbroke winner. Think about it. It was a Stradbroke winner. 
and then he came out and won last year. So all signs point to Steffi Magnetica running well. Six Barrier lets them do whatever they want. They can go all the way to the rear or they can sit amongst the midfield pack or sit just off the midfield pack. Either way, she'll be one of the strongest sweepers. And as long as she doesn't find herself in traffic, she's a genuine each way chance contender for me. We move to number seven, Sunshine in Paris. Tommy Berry to ride. Barrier eight, Nisham trained. $11 to win, $3 to win in place. Yeah, good horse uh, contender. I think Tommy Berry's in, a, in for a good chance here. Um, $10 is a good price to have as well. Sunshine Paris doing pretty well. So, yeah, contender. I think she's the forgotten horse of the field, in my opinion. Yeah, she got agreed. the scalp of Jolly Star last start, and she was flying headed into this race last year before an injury got in the way. You would think that she just ends up towards the rear, maybe not all the way last, but she'll be sitting off them, definitely. But she will absolutely fly late off that hot tempo that they're going to set. It is just a matter of Barry pressing the button at the right time, I think, if she wants to be in the finish. If he times that right, she is going to be absolutely flying. She would want the track on the drier side of things, though, but she's more than capable if it's slightly soggy. Must include in all exotics punters. Yep. Race, well, race eight. Number eight, your current favourite at $6. Don't you love to see how open this is that $6 is your favourite? Jolly Star, J-Mac jumps on. He thinks this is the best chance. Are you seeing this as a contender are or a you, pretender? Are you surprised that she's jump favourite? I'm a little bit surprised. Look, I, look I, seeing I, this I would field, be surprised if she was a, a $4, $3 favourite, but considering it's $6 the field, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't hate it. I, I think, don't know if she'll be jumping favourite on the day as well. I wouldn't be surprised if other horses come in like an I wish I win and jump favourite instead. Yeah, fair enough. No, uh, that's a good point. Uh, contender, yeah, ran awesome first um, first up. Probably lost a little bit um, second up, but it wasn't too bad. It's trialed since. Um, yeah, I didn't watch the trial. She's best but. when fresh. So they, they've given her a month break specifically because she's best when fresh. They were even maybe even thinking of going straight from first up into the Everest, but I think there was still something that needed to be done to convince her that she could get there. They wanted some residual fitness, but... I mean, you got to take her on her first up run, don't you? Surely. Yeah, I, I think she's a contender. Absolutely obliterated them first up. Was it a much easier field? Of course. But J-Mac will be doing everything in his power to turn the switch back on here. He wasn't on second up. Maybe that's something that you read into. Um, he picked it. He could have ridden half the field and he picked this horse. So surely that tells you that he thinks this is the best chance and you've got to respect his opinion. Um Will want it on the drier side, though, punters, I will say. Drier, the better for Jolly Star. Uh, but, yeah, serious contender. Isn't my pick, but she's a contender. We get to the three-year-olds. Number nine, Growing Empire. Karen McAvoy, he knows how to win this race. He's done it three times before. He's currently jumping out of barrier seven, and he's paying $7.50. Thoughts, Nick? Yeah, contender. Um, would have been my leading one going in. Um, happy Craig Williams has jumped off if, if you are a Growing Empire fan. Can't get it done. Been looking so impressive. Um, this this cult could do anything. I think if it wins this, it'll, it'll probably unfortunately get bred. Um, still a cult, obviously. So that price will be very, very high. Um, I, I, you'd love to see horses keep running, but honestly, it's probably going to go and go straight to the stud if it wins this race, but genuine contender. Yeah, pushes forward. Should either be leading outside the leader or right on the leader's bum going around the turn. So he'll have every chance. He'll have very little excuses. He either sinks or swims in that pressure. He cannot switch off like he did in the Manicato in that last 50 metres. If he does, I reckon he'll he end up e finishing e almost e last. Line, man. Um, whether or not he did, McAvoy will have seen that. He'll make sure that he's putting every effort in possible because even if that horse does want to switch off, he won't want to be dragged over coals by the stewards. He'll be making sure he is just getting stuck into it. So I think contender, yes. As we move to number 10, Traffic Warden. Jamie Carr's on board here from Barrier 2, $7 to win, $2.40 to place. Uh, contender, I think pretty much, like, spoiler, pretty much most of these three-year-olds are, are, are genuine contenders. Um yeah, she's a she's a good jockey. She can get it done. Um, this this horse has been pretty good. For, for, sorry, falling just behind broadsiding is um good form to go off. So, 
I mean, yes, 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 won the Everest as a three-year-old. He also came second in a Golden Rose, just like Traffic Warden did. The drop back to the 1,200 setup, I think, will be prime for him. I think he's a sprinter, not a miler, so I'm glad he came here instead of the guineas. Drops 3.5 kilos as well, which will help. Handles every kind of ground, which will help. And will be sitting in the perfect spot to cross hills and storm down the outside in the final 200. I think he is the best chance of the three-year-olds, in my opinion. He is definitely a contender. I know you hate to think that because you're a big Storm Boy lover. You're a big Growing Empire lover. But I think Traffic Warden is the best three-year-old in this race. And I can definitely see him getting up. We move to Storm Boy, Horse 11. Brenton of Duller comes back over to Australia to ride for Waterhouse and Bot out of Barrier 5. $13 to win, $3.60 to place. Huge. Absolutely huge. I'm on it, punters. This is my tip. I don't care. Duh. I'm going to give it early. Um, $13, 3 60 I was going to get on this at $9. So, yeah, 1,200 meter horse. If it gets a jump, oh, I, I see him winning. I Look, I either way, I'm confident he finishes top three. Like, that could be one of the bets of the day, I reckon, is just... A $3.60 on off the $3.60 place. Storm Boy to place is... is a, is great. I think he leads, jumps well. Um, and yeah, a lot of people like you are going to look silly. So yeah, Storm Boy, great chance. Get it done. Get it done, son. Pretender for me. <laughs> look, like I said, I can't have 12 contenders here. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, he is one of the few horses that I think the negative just outweighs the positive in this race. Number one, his jump. If he misses it, he's done. Number two. Any horse misses the jump. That's what I'm done. saying. And he's got a very big tendency to miss the jump. If he misses it, he's done. Number two. He likes to not be bothered in the lead. And he's going to get a hell of a lot of bothering in the lead. Here, he's going to get all the bothering in the world from the other horses, putting as much pressure on him as they can. So even if he does get up to a lead, he's going to have the pressure on. Number three. He won't like that the ground is a bit soggy. So he's going to hope that it's dry. Um, I think he's more of a dry tracker. So with all of that in consideration, I think a place is best for him. I do think he's a great place chance, but a place is the only thing that I can see for him. I can't see a win. Hence, I have to say pretender. Cool. We move to number 12, Lady of Camelot, Rachel King, rides out of barrier 11, $51 to win, $10 to place. No chance. Um, look, she isn't in a very ideal barrier. She probably isn't the strongest winning chance, but her price is silly in a race where realistically anything can win. I've had $5 on the place just in case she does because I think she's a definite potential place chance, but she can't win. She's a place chance in my opinion. She wouldn't surprise me if she won, but I see place as a bigger chance than that. I think she can only manage second or third at best. Hence, I'm going pretender, but gee, $10 to place in a race like this where realistically any of them could place, I'm taking that. $5 on to place is just a little cheeky side bet that I'm having here. Uh, so we come to the end here. You've got those uh, emergencies, emergencies that won't get a run. Look, unless something drastic happens on the morning, like a morning of injury, like a lost and running a couple of years ago, they don't come into play, punters. There's no, oh, it's wet. I'm going to scratch and miss out on the chance of winning $12 million. Not happening. Okay. Overpass is the only one that can win, in my opinion, if he does get a start. Uh, you gave it early, but do you want to give us another rundown of why Storm Boy's your tip? Uh, I've said it. Um the price is amazing. I think um, jumps wins. Um, it's got that penetrating run that can get it done. Um, Ooh, that very penetrating, penetrating run. run, such such as such as which that Nature Strip had when he won. Ho, ho, ho. I'm not saying he's Nature Strip, okay. which you'll try and take me out of context because right. you're an absolute coward. Oh. But um, <laughs> he 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 he's got tendencies to be a really good horse and. If he shows up, he can get it done. God, my ears just lit up there. The amount of shit you give me for comparing horses to good horses. But fair enough, if he's not the next nature strip. I didn't say he was the next nature strip. I was I'm just, just saying. Just double checking. Oh, look at this guy. Just double checking. He's like the, he's, you're, you're the media that the people don't like. Oh, oh, oh piss off, people. You're, a Tom, you're the Tom Morris. Of, oh, I'm, I'm the DDF, bro. I'm the Dan the, Goringer of the racing world. You're the Tom Morris of the racing no world. No way, bro. I'm the Dan Goringer of the racing you're world. You're just the osmosis guy. Yeah, well, he won for 20 bucks. I made a lot of people a lot of money. Fuck off. Um, Bella and Patina for me. I've been Team Bella all the way coming into this. I just can't jump off her. The barrier does suck, but if anyone's going to buck that trend of wide barriers winning, it's going to be her. She's just so versatile. Plus, she loves the wet more than others. 
And if it does end up wet, I mentioned all the way at the start of this podcast that they will get off the fence, likely, if it's wet. You know, the, the fence will start to get chopped off and they'll start to get off the wet, which means that wider alley will only be a benefit of her instead of being a disadvantage. I think considering the price and her ability, I can't let her go around without me. I know it's a stacked race, but $10 for Bella Nipotina? Come on, man. i got to take her. Who's your first four across the line? Um, look, I'll go Storm Boy. Um, I'll go Growing Empire. I'll go Jolly Star and I'll go... I'll go I Am Me, just to throw a couple of different ones in there. But look, punters, this is a real tough one. So, again, it was Storm Boy, Growing Empire, Jolly Star, and then I Am Me to come four. Well done, buddy. Okay. Got it right. Piss off, dude. <laughs> First four, Bella Nipotina, to me, wins. Like I said, I wish I win, getting a strong second vibe from him. Uh, and then Traffic Warden to come third. Private Eye to Storm Home into fourth. Storm Boy, not top four. Nah, that's silly. Dude, you know I reckon that. it's gonna you be a, it's gonna be a blanket finish, bro. I you reckon they're that, all gonna though. be separated by like less than a length. I hey, re- if he doesn't win, he f- he finishes in the top top four. This is the hardest first four to pick. Look, okay, it's literally, fine. It's is fine. literally your winning chance. This all day. It's all right. It's fine. It's yeah, all right. it's, we'll leave it. Yeah, literally take your pick. Who's gonna finish third and fourth? Because I yeah. think it's Bella Nipotina. I wish I win, and then literally ten horses who could make up those last two spots. So. Take it with a grain of salt. 